I'm Jeff Wright, and welcome to the Plain to Fame podcast. As an entrepreneur, I have not only built an extremely successful business from scratch, but also employed thousands of men and women and helped them on their path to financial freedom. One of the most common themes for me and everyone else who has succeeded is that we never blame anyone and are aware that our success or failures fall solely on our shoulders. It was not until I hit rock bottom that I realized that only I alone could change my future. And on my podcast, you're going to hear the stories of successful folks who have gone from blame to fame in their own lives. I look forward to sharing my journey and great guests that will educate you about their path to success. Please join me each week on the Blame to Fame podcast. Welcome to Blame to Fame, where today we got a real treat for you. We have Mr. Nick Shelton out in Denver, Colorado. Uh, Nick, I believe you were raised in Texas. Yes. But but you're uh, uh but you're a Colorado man now. And Nick has written a book about the introvert's guide to world domination. I love the way that sounds. Um and working on a second book about social anxiety, but talk about guide to world domination. You know, honestly, if you think about it, if you look at Elon Musk, Bill Gates, you look at all these people, these are some of the most introverted people on earth. So right. I, I think introverts are already dominating the world. <laughs> yes. So that's true. But, you know, instead of so there's dominating the world and then there's the the inner world as well. So I'm trying to say more of the inner world and then some of the outer world as well. OK, well, well, tell me, um, I, I'm I'm a big believer, Nick, that that introverts uh, and, and like we were talking before we went on the show, I'm, I'm a bit of one myself. But I've kind of learned to use that as a strength and not a weakness. And a lot of people, you know, find that introvertedness to be a weakness because they see on social media all these people that are so jacked up and they're, you know, flashing, you know, these rented private jets and rented Ferraris and, and all that stuff. And they they think that the only way that they're going to be successful is if they're that way, when we both know that's not really the way the world works. And uh, I think they use a lot of that in 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 holding themselves down, thinking that, you know, I am the way that I am. And, you know, I'm you know, I'll never be able to do this. I'll never have the courage to do that. When, in fact, I think that that introvertness that that people have uh, properly channeled is one of the most uh, powerful tools you can use. Would you agree? I would agree. Yes, a lot of people think of it as a weakness, but it's it's really not. There are a lot of strengths that introverts have, and one of them, what I say is a superpower of introverts, is the power of observation. So most introverts that I know, including myself, we will you know kind of kick back and observe, watch what's going on instead of you know just running into the room and just start blabbing. We take in the scene, see what's going on, learn about. The, the the players in the room and then we can when we do decide we're going to speak up we are we have a better foundation for that and so i think that we have a lot more uh we're we're better at gathering that information versus just trying to hop out into the spotlight right away we're more of the uh the behind the scenes sort of thing and we we can enjoy our time in the spotlight too but most of our our big decisions are from that information gathering and uh, kind of on the, the low key aspect. You know, generally I, I find that when I go to, to board meetings and we're listening to all these presentations, I, I go to a lot of insurance company board meetings and whatnot. Lots of times I'll sit in that meeting and I won't say a word. Right. I'll just soak it all in of who said what, and I read their body language and whatnot. And then uh, sometimes I'll sleep on it for a day and let everything process. And then I, I can really, really get a very clear picture of what's going on. But I find that a lot of people who who are always contributing to the meeting, who seem to know everything and whatnot, uh, are probably the least effective ones. 
Right. But they want to be seen as someone who knows what's going on. So they they throw themselves out there to to give that that uh, impression to the room. But some of us can see through it when we go, hmm, I, <laughs> I, I don't think now that they've told me what they're thinking, I know they don't know exactly what they're talking about. But if you don't say anything, then nobody knows. <laughs> nobody knows if you do or you don't. That's right. And, and, you know, a, a lot of, you know, I kind of equate this to, um, you know, back when I was a teenager, you know, we'd have dances at the high school. I don't even know if they even do that anymore. Uh, but, you know, you'd have all these guys standing up, they'd have it at the gym and all these guys would be standing up against the wall, against the right. bleachers, just yeah. looking around, <laughs> waiting, waiting, waiting. And then on the other side, you, you'd see a bunch of girls waiting, waiting, waiting. And, you know, at, at some point you have to make a move. Yes. <laughs> I remember those times very well. And at that time I was thinking, I would like, I wish I was just able to just walk over there and start this, start this party up. But that did not happen. But in my mind, I was like, yeah. I would like to be one of those guys. And even even in networking meetings, and I want to talk to you about that too, because sure. I know you said you were you, you were working on a book about that. Yeah. But but in networking, um, my wife and I used to go uh, to networking meetings in Tampa. Uh, she's in the medical field, so this would really be more for her than than it was for me. But if I ever walked up and talked to someone, it was almost like thank God somebody spoke to me. Right. Yes. Yeah, exactly. People and, want that. I oh, continue. Sorry. Well, and, and, you know, the, the thing is, is I would ask them, uh, you know, what, what do you do? And yes. they say, well, you know, I'm a, I'm a real estate agent. I said, I understand that's your title, but what, what is it that you really do? Right. Well, I, I, I really help sellers get the most money for their homes by doing this and that. And I just let them just continuously, you know, I will just ask them small questions just to have them continuously talk and talk and talk about and open up about all that they do and whatnot. And sometimes I could stand there and talk to them for 45 minutes, never tell them the first thing about me, Right. walk away. And they think, oh, God, he's the greatest guy in the world. He's yeah. the greatest listener. He, uh, you know, they'll, they'll run me down. Hey, can I get your card? And I'm sitting there thinking, you don't even know what I do. But right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's a that's a really cool thing. I call it uh, I call it hunting introverts. When I go to a, a networking thing, I try to look for the people that because there's some, some people that are just really getting after it. Then there's other people around the edges and they might be looking at their phone or something. And I say, OK, these people need to be rescued. I will hunt the introverts. I will look for the people that look how I feel so I can spot them out. And mm -hmm. I will go up and I will do have that first mover advantage, go up and engage them. And I'll do the same thing. Instead of asking, since everybody always says, what do you do? I want to find out, since people really bond over hobbies and similar interests, I want to find out what their interests are, what their hobbies are. And then, so for example, someone's like, I meet a ton of real estate agents, let's say, ton of them. So uh, whether... I'm going to refer someone to you or not isn't based on, well, you're a real estate agent. I'll send someone. If I, if we have similar, like I like kayaking and if you happen to like kayaking also, and we start talking about kayaking, then sooner or later, somebody says, do you know a real estate agent I can use? I'd be like, well, you should use this guy because, <laughs> you know, we have similar hobbies. So, you know, and people, a lot of times they, you know, they want business. A lot of times those networking things, they're, they're trying to find some business leads, but you have to, instead of just walking in and saying, this is what I do, this is my title. Uh, it's nice to, you want to get a feel for the person, the person behind it. And then, you know, you're going to, so I never really ask people what they do because they'll always tell me, <laughs> they'll tell me it'll come out in conversation. I want to know, uh, you know, if they've been to a glass blowing class or, beekeeping what do they think about beekeeping you know <laughs> do you have to wear the suit how does it work you know just all these different things and then what they do will come out but i'm trying to find out about the person and i think that's kind of similar 
to what you were saying when you're asking them all these little questions, then you're actually getting to know the the person behind the the real estate agent or insurance person or uh, the plumber. You're finding out about them, and that's what's really important. It's making a real connection with that person. Yeah, you know, sometimes if they're wearing a, a nice watch, I'll say, "Hey, that's a that's a really cool watch." Uh, you know, where did you get that? And then they'll start telling me all about their Rolex and. Or, or or their Panerai or whatever, yeah. and 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 I'm in I'm in the watches in a big way, so I you know that's something I can I can really talk about, yeah. And uh, I just start asking them questions about that, or like you said, finding out what their passion is, yes. And and you can find out a, about a lot about someone just how they talk about their passion. Yeah. And, and like, I, I talked to, I talked to, to a young lady on an airplane not long ago was sitting next to me and she was, um, she was reading like a, a yoga magazine. Yeah. And, and I just said, Hey, or, uh, um, you look like somebody really enjoys yoga. Oh yeah. I do this. I do that. I teach. I said, well, it sounds like you're really passionate about helping people. Oh yeah, you have no idea how passionate I am. I do this. I and, and you know, we really in in over maybe 30 45 minutes just drilled it down. I could tell you almost anything and everything about this person. But yes. but but what what advice would you give people? Um you know, they they want to have a conversation with someone, but there are a lot of people out there that are so introverted they they can't make that first step. But are you talking about uh, like so, things to say? Something yeah, things that... to say, or or how do they? You know, how do you suggest that people get over the anxiety that they have of of just not talking to someone, or or the anxiety of of just walking up to a total stranger? I tell people, well, you know, if if you're in business, you need to talk to strangers because if you need money, the strangers are the ones that have the money. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. And so, yeah, I can address that in two ways. So one way is the, uh, a lot of times people say, I don't have anything to say. I don't know what to say. And in that case, it's similar to what you said about the watch. I say observations. So you, anything about the room, anything about the food that's being served there, drinks that are being served there, you can say, Oh, did you try these sandwiches, cucumber sandwiches? That's interesting. I see these at a lot of places. Have you tried them? I think that's, it's a weird thing, but I hear it's sophisticated. I'm going to put my pinky out when I eat it. You, know? <laughs> uh, you could say there's art in the bathroom. You know, did you, this is a fancy place. I've never seen art and there's a couch in there. I, you know, we can hang out in the bathroom. There's a, uh, you know, you can talk about it's very, you know, the temperature, it's cold, it's hot. Something about the person, hey, nice eyeglass frames. You know, there's just anything that you observe. And I also tell people to have some, like a, a lot of times I have a, a, a lapel pin that's a seahorse or a dragonfly, and I'll put that on. And uh, so it's a conversation topic. So then people will see it and go, I wonder what that's about. And so I'll give people something to talk to me about. But so it's just whatever you can observe about anything the person's wearing or anything about the environment, you can bring up for conversation topics. Now for the anxiety part, and this would, this applies to the, that strength to talk to new people, like attend the event in the first place, or even with public speaking. So this is a little hack for me for uh, public speaking. I, I love public speaking, but I used to have these little panic attacks right like 10 minutes before it was time to public speak. Once I got on stage after about the first minute or two, then I was fine. But it was that initial part. And so I would, you know, the heart would be beating. I'd, I'd be, you know, overheating and thinking I'm not getting enough oxygen, that I'm getting too much oxygen. And it was, it was, and then thinking, do people notice? Are they seeing me freak out? But I, I, the hack to this was I have this, a very close friend of mine is a police officer. And whenever, you know, he's a really fun, jovial guy. And whenever he would be on duty and I would call him, he'd be really serious. And I'd say, what's, what's wrong with you? What are you doing? Why are you being weird? And he'd say, when I put the uniform on, I am a police officer. I have to conduct myself this way because 
when I show up somewhere, there's expectations of me. I have a job to do. People are looking to me for answers. And then I was thinking about that. And I was thinking about the power of a uniform on the mind. And I was thinking, whoa, okay. So then I started thinking about, you know, Batman, Superman, these guys, they'll put on their uniform, they go do their job, and then they come back home, take it off, and they're a regular person. So mm -hmm. they don't keep on the uniform all the time. So I said, what if I had took that and I had a uniform that wasn't just for the public thing, but like a private uniform just for me. So I know when I put this on, then I'm this person and I do this job. So for me, and this is the exact one, I, I said, I'll use a bracelet. So I got a little bracelet. And I said, this is my public speaker's uniform. And it also could work for attending a social event, a fundraiser or something like that. And so I'd say, whenever I put this on, so you know, half an hour before the event or public speaking, I'd put on my uniform and I'd say, I have the uniform on now. So like my friend with the police officer uniform, he doesn't have to put it on and then say affirmations and mantras and then say, I believe I'm a cop. Hey, you're a cop. No matter, you got the uniform on. People are going to come to you. You you are that. That's it. So mm -hmm. I said, I don't have to believe in this. This is the uniform. I am a public speaker. I have a job to do. Go do your job. And so I would put it on and I would look at it and say, well, I got the uniform on. I got to go. So, so for somebody that was having some anxiety about, you know, walking into a place full of strangers or public speaking or anything, going on a date for a first date, then they could say, okay, this is my, you know, and it doesn't have to be a bracelet. It could be a, a belt. It could be some socks or something that you say, these are my, this is my uniform for first dates. And when I, I'm an expert at first dates, when I put these socks on and then you put it on your uniform for that, and then you go do your job. How interesting is that? I've never thought of that before. Um, you know, having, having a, a material object that's part of your uniform yes. when, when you do a certain thing. Right. And then when you're done, you take it off. I once like again, that. I like yeah. that. I've never thought of that before, but you're absolutely yeah. right. Like a police officer, if it, when he puts on when he puts on the uniform and the gun, he's he's on. And it, it's funny because I had a friend of mine visiting down here from Georgia the other day. Yeah. And we were talking. We, we went through an air. We did an airboat ride through the Everglades. Now, if you want to do some kayaking, um, you throw in the hot weather with reptiles that want to kill you and that that makes that makes for an adventure some kayak trip my friend but <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that want to eat you but right. but we were talking about uh uh we both knew this game warden who's been since passed away you know growing up in georgia and when he had the uniform on he was just super strict would would one of the guys he would give it he would write a ticket to his own mother I mean, right. when, he, when he got into that character, he was in that character. But when he what when he was off the job, he was a totally, completely different person. Right. Yeah. See, so you can see how yeah. the power of the uniform. How yeah, it so could the, work. That makes all the sense in the world to me, because a, a lot. But it, it's difficult for some people to take those hats off and, you right. know, and swap one hat for another. And yes. I, I think you have to, because, you know, I, I think there's more to life than, than what it is that you do, right? you know, you know, regardless of what your job is. And, you know, it, and I want to ask you something too, when you, when you do a public speaking gig, I did one not long ago. Um, I spoke for probably 45 minutes and people walked up and told me how much they enjoyed it and they learned things and whatnot. And I wanted so badly to ask them, what did I say? I don't even remember <laughs> what I said. <laughs> I'll get up yes. there and talk and totally forget what I said. Yes. Does that ever happen to you? Yes, all the time. That's perfectly normal. <laughs> that means you were in the flow. You were in the zone because <laughs> you kind of black out and you go into autopilot. And that autopilot, you, it knows what to do. And so then you come yeah. back into the other version of you. And you barely remember, but yes, I, I, that has happened to me many times. Yeah. Somebody said, I really like that point that you made. Oh, what, what point was that? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. no, you don't remember. I said, well, I made so many points, which point I kind of say, you know, 
save myself a little bit. I made, I made a lot of points, which, which one was it that resonated with you so much? Oh, right. oh it was this one. Oh yeah. You, you, yeah. You need to do this. You need not to do that and, and whatnot. Um, but you know, part of part, you know, I run, I run a big insurance organization. Okay. And so we have a lot of insurance salespeople. Uh, most of them are not, you know, brash, you know, admittedly, we do have some of those, but most, uh, most of them are, are quite introverted. Yeah. And, and I will tell you that the one, the most successful people, uh, salespeople that we have in our organization, ones that are in seven figure territory every year, as far as their personal income goes, I would say maybe all but one are extreme introverts. All right. That's good to hear. Let's go. Because, because it, it's funny because I was explaining this to a young man in the gym this morning who's very introverted, who uh, wants to get into sales. And he was kind of throwing me some mock sales pitch that he had at, at six yeah. o'clock this morning. And I said, let me ask you something. We're, we're in at one of these cable machines that has four sides. If you go to the gym, you'll know what I'm talking about. That right. you, you know, four guys can or four people can work on it at the same time. Right. I said, if I were to walk up and you know pretend you're selling these machines and and I want to look at it and I'm standing here looking at them, uh, what are you going to do? He says, "Oh, I'm going to tell you that it'll do this. I'm going to tell you it'll do that." And you know, I, you know, he named off a dozen things that, that this machine will do. Okay. I said, wouldn't you just ask me, wouldn't it make more sense? Just to ask me, I see you're looking at this. What, what did you really have in mind right. with this? And, yeah, gotta... and, and so he says, yeah, I said, so if you asked me what I had in mind and I said, well, uh, I've, I have back issues and I need to do some things to strengthen my back. Then you would start asking me questions about my back and what I had done before, and then showing me what this machine would do for my back, what it's going right. to do for everything else. Doesn't matter. Right. I said, you're, you're giving me a whole lot of, a whole lot of stuff out there. I'm not interested in, I'm only interested in what it's going to do for the problem that I have. And the only way you're going to find out what problem I have is to ask. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. And and it's the same way with, with people selling insurance. You know, they'll uh, a lot of them will tell them all these great things it'll do, but they never ask them why that they why they want it, why they need it, what pain it is that 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 they need to get solved. And if they tell them. I want this to take care of my kids in case I'm killed in a car crash or whatever, then that's the direction we go in. None of this other stuff matters. Right. And, and the introverts are very good at doing that. The, uh, the extroverts are not, they're <laughs> just going to throw it all over the place. And yeah. that's why I say, I think being an introvert, I agree with you can definitely, especially in a sales environment can be a deadly superpower if it's used the right way. Right. Very good point. And yeah, there's a lot of a lot of introverts that are trying to figure out like the steps that they need to to take advantage of their introversion. And that's one of the reasons why when I wrote the book, An Introvert's Guide to World Domination, I wrote it because I looked at a lot of other books out there and they were very clinical and I said, they would talk about, you know, lab rats did this. And then when you do this, this part of your brain lights up. And I was like, how's that helping me? That Tell me what I need to do. And then so, you know, I was the guinea pig. I went out because I felt that I was missing out on all kinds of opportunities, missing out on meeting. So I tell people all the time, they, there's that saying, uh, you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time around. And I was thinking, well, where are these people? Who are they? Where are they? And if I find out who they are and where they are, how do I get there? And then when I'm there, how do I engage with those people? So then I can, I can be surround myself with them. And then so I had to figure that out myself. And so I was going out as the guinea pig, I'm the lab rat. And 
I went out and would observe people, see what worked, what didn't work. And uh, I, there's things that people would say, oh, just go do this. But I would say, well, I'm not going to do that. So it's, it's what can I do that I actually would do? So then I tried to break down all kinds of little steps on what I could do that I would actually do, and then put them in a format that it, it worked for me. So then other people, my other introvert friends said, how did that work? How did you do that? And then I would say, okay, here's, here's what I did. And then, then I started getting asked to speak about it. And then somebody asked me, where's, what book uh, do you have? And I didn't have a book. So then I wrote a book, but the, the main uh, pillars of this are, you know, getting known, then making connections and then maintaining those connections because a lot of times it's it's difficult to get known and you want to get known so then that way the more people know who know you the less you have to introduce yourself and the fewer cold rooms you have to walk into because somebody in there you'll know that can introduce you to people and then the making connections naturally you want to make as we talked about with the the watch thing now that we know that you like watches we'd come and talk to you about watches and we'd build something there and a lot of somebody might say, well, I don't know about watches. And I was like, no, but, you know, uh, since Jeff knows about watches, y- you would love nothing more than to educate someone <laughs> about watches. If I had questions, you'd be like, oh, let me let me tell you about this. And then and that would build something. And then the maintaining of the co- of the connections and the relationship, a lot of people fall short on the maintenance of it, which is the most important part. Like I think in sales, they say the something about the follow-up the the funds are in the follow-up something there's some kind of saying about it's all about the following up maintaining relation relations and so once you get those three things so i just kind of packaged it all together on how i was able to do it in simple bite-sized steps and that's what why i wrote the book it worked for me and it some it works for other people as well Uh, i i think follow-up is probably one of the most important thing you can do and most important things you can do in sales is, is follow up. Yes. It's just that a lot of people follow up the wrong way. Ah, yes, yes. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a big believer that if you're in almost any business, if you aren't getting at least half of your business from referrals, you're doing something wrong. Right. And, and, and the way that, that I, the best way that I know of to get referrals is not to be one of these people saying, hey, if you'll fill out this card and give me the names of 10 people, nobody wants to do that. Right. I think you get great referrals by giving people an excellent experience. Right. In whatever whatever it is that they're doing. That could be, you know, being a good listener. One of the things that I really pound into the people that work with me. And again, this is a big difference between the ones that make seven figures and the ones that don't. All the people that that work with me that make seven figures, you know what they all have in common? What's that? They They all write thank you notes. Ah, yes, yes, absolutely. That's one of my recommendations. You know why nobody you know why that works so well? Because no one does it. Right, exactly. They all write thank you notes. They all uh, will stay in some sort of contact with their customers with no expectations whatsoever. You know, I would just, you know, I would just re- reach out to you. Hey, Nick, uh, Nick, it's Jeff. I hope you're doing well. Just wanted to say hello. Yes. Not, not trying to push anything. It's just, you know, keeping a name out there. So, so they all send out uh, thank you notes. They, they send them all birthday cards. They send them yes. all Christmas cards. And I have a, a few of the older guys that still have these wall calendars printed up with their ugly mugs on them and send them. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, the, you know, to hang on the refrigerator, yes. but 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 you know, it, it it's just the little simple things that it, uh, that 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 they do that that set them so far apart, right? And I think in today's times, it's 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 easier than ever to set yourself apart. It's by doing little things like that, and you know, the biggest thing is what I call being reliable. It's being reliable because unreliability in this country is epidemic. Yes, it is. Okay. Definitely. Uh, I bought a new house 
uh, here about six months ago. My wife wanted, you know, she didn't like the countertops. She wanted to get new countertops. So, you know, we found a guy in Naples uh, who uh, we went to his shop, saw the, the stuff that he, all the examples, beautiful work. He did a great job, uh, gave us uh, a good price, not a great one, but a good one. You know, these right. countertops aren't cheap any way you right. cut it. Um, you know, was really clean, didn't make a mess, none of that. I wouldn't recommend him in a million years, not to anyone. And the reason why is because at least six, seven times he told us he would be here at 9 a.m. and he showed up at three. Ah, yeah. With no calls, no nothing, no text, no nothing. Right. That to me, that's a deal breaker. I would yes. never recommend anyone because he's not reliable. Right. Yes. Yeah. That's a big deal to me too. Punctuality is huge. Um, I'd like to touch on the the thank you cards that you talked about. Yeah, please uh, that's do. One, one of the things that I also tell people to do is write the the thank you, the thank you notes, thank you cards. And I always say handwritten, actually put it in the mail because I said it really sets you apart. And I, I sometimes will do a handwritten one and I'll do a, uh, we have this place here in Colorado called Cold Stone Creamery. It's this uh, like boutique ice cream place. And they have, you know, a $5 gift card, $10 gift card. And I might put one of those in there and say, have a cold one on me, you know, and <laughs> I'll, I'll send that out to them. And, you know, people don't, they're not used to getting actual like mail, handwritten mail. Nobody does that. So if you get it, you, it has this impact on you. Like, Oh, I actually got, he wrote me something on nice parchment paper and I'll write out the thank you thing. And I know that I had a, a chiropractor that used to do that would send out uh, birthday cards, but then uh, she switched it to an e-card. And then I was like, well, you just messed everything up. I don't want your yeah. e-card in my email. I liked, I really liked it when I got that actual real birthday card. But when it's an e-card, I was like, you got lazy on me. What's what's going on? And then on the uh, follow-up, and it seems like this is something that you and your uh, your your crew all practice this, but this is how I teach the follow-up. And that is, I will say every three months, so quarterly, go through all of your email contacts and all of your uh, personal contacts uh, for phone numbers and emails and make a list of everyone that you didn't talk to in the past three months that you should have talked to. And then once you have that list, and you don't have to do it all in one day, but start chipping away at that list. And I would say there's some people that you and you know who those people are that you should probably give a phone call to. And then there's other people. My favorite thing is doing a video. So on my phone, I'll send a video message and just say, hey, it's Nick. Hey, Jeff, I, I haven't talked to you for a while. Just seeing how you're doing. This is what's going on with me. And I'll just say, yeah, I'm planning on taking this kayaking trip down in Florida. And this is the ABCD. And then I'll ask about, you know, how's your son with his broken arm? Did that, uh, did that heal? And, and so whatever I know about them, I'll just ask about that. How are you doing? And then that's it. And so what that does is if, if I can do the video and if you can't do the video, then I will do an audio because it's always better than just sending an email or yeah. a text, but the video, they can see me, they can hear me, they can get the body language in there. And it's more personal. And it's like, I took the time to catch you up on me. So now you're up to date on everything that I'm doing. And then I get up to date on, because you'll probably respond, and then I'll know what you're doing. And that way, we're top of mind with each other. So that way, for example, if you, if I worked at a university in the admissions department and you had a son that was getting ready to go to college and we hadn't talked for six years and now all of a sudden you pop up and say hey uh, my son wants to go to that college what can you do for me and i'm like i haven't talked to you in six years yeah. but if we'd been doing this every three months then you know i would already know that your son was getting college age and i would have probably already reached out to you and said is he thinking about coming to this school you know so i probably would have tried to get you to send him to the school, I would have already known. You would know about me. if uh, So if there's something I could do to help you with your business, 
I, I, since I know what's going on, if I met somebody else or someone else told me some update about them that, that would accent what you're doing, I'd be like, oh, well, he's doing this, they're doing this, maybe I should put them together. And then the same with you and me, if you heard something that I was doing, you'd be like, oh, he's working on this, then this might help. But, you know, once again, it's not, no one's pitching anything to anyone. I'm just no. updating you on what's going on with me. Then I, I'm asking about what the latest is with whatever I heard about you the last time we talked. And then, so it just keeps us top of mind. And that's one thing that I tell people quarterly, make that list and just chip away at it and try to either meet in person, make a phone call or do the video or audio. And it it makes all the difference in the world. Oh, I believe it. Um, one of the habits that I follow every day is every morning, um, yeah, I'm a weirdo. I get up at 4.30 every morning. Yeah, I, I go to the gym and all that. And yeah. I don't do this at 4.30 in the morning because I don't want to wake anyone up. But right. uh, before nine, uh, I will text 10 people. Just thinking about you, love you, hope you're doing well, just want to say hello and whatnot. Because right. a lot of times, like you said, how many times do you see someone pop up in your phone that you haven't talked to in six or 12 months? And the first thing you wonder is, I wonder what the hell they want. <laughs> right. Exactly. Before you answer it. Yes. Because most people only call you unless they want something. Right. But if you are, if you're doing things like that without any of any expectation, uh, I, you know, I, I have found people so much more responsive to me just by just, just saying, Hey, hope you're doing well. Hope it's all good. During COVID, I did it a lot. Right. And, and a lot, and, and in fact, during COVID, I actually just wrote a lot of handwritten notes yeah. just saying, Hey, we're here for you. Hope, hope everything's well and, and whatnot, because, uh, you know, most of the country wasn't like here in Florida here during COVID, we did anything we wanted, but right. a lot of these states, they couldn't. So we were, uh, uh, I, I, we, I was very proactive in, in just reaching out to people. And it was unbelievable to me how many people later on thanked me. Some of them even cried saying, you know, I really appreciate you reaching out. Right. Somebody cares. Somebody, somebody cared. Somebody yes. cared. And, um, you know, and, and that's what it's all about. And that's what building relationships is all about. And, and um, you know, it, it, whether it be, you know, dating someone and eventually marrying them or, or, or courting, you know, going to a networking meeting and finding people and making them customers or clients, that's all relationships. Yes. Relationships is, 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 is totally what everything's about, really. Yes, that's the key to life. Yeah, and, and I think that the biggest relationship you can have, though, is a relationship with yourself. Yes. And so, you know, you got to, you know, even with the introverts out there, there has to be some sort of sense of boldness. It has to come out every now and then to step out of that comfort zone to and that's why I really love your idea of putting on the wristband you know yeah, yeah. that that puts you you know that's your uniform puts you in character so to speak right and uh I, I'm gonna suggest that to people because apparently it works well it works well yes and well there's some people that I've told about and they say well that would never work for me and I say well then it won't but like, I want it to work. You have to want it and say, I, I'm doing this so this will work for me. Not if, if you go into it saying that would never work, then, you know, okay, I don't know how to help you if you're going to try to find things that aren't going to work for you. You know, we want people that want to be helped, that want it to work. So what would you say to people that, um, you know, they, you know, they're really shy, they're really introverted. They want to go out and meet people. What what are the best two or three things that they can do to get started to kind of help them shed some of that anxiety, uh, maybe garner a little boldness and kind of get into character, so to speak? Right. Well, one of the things that I really like is what I call trying to get pre-known. So if there's an event coming up, 
then usually there's some kind of social media attached to it. So I would say go to that social media page for that, and there'll usually be a little a little chat thing somewhere in there. And then observe that, find out who the who the movers and shakers are on there. There's usually maybe one to three people that are really active on there and then start piggybacking off of their whatever their comments are either compliment the comment ask some questions and engage with them a little bit and so these people that are pretty big on that chat are probably going to be fairly popular at the event as well and so when you engage with them on the chat then and you know compliment them thank them for sharing then when it gets closer to the event, say, I'm going to be at this event. I'm looking forward to meeting you to put a face with a name and all that sort of thing. And now they're expecting to meet you. So now you might know, you know, two or three people that are expecting they've seen your name pop up on the chat. You've engaged with them there. We're in the safety of your own home. Yeah. And now when you show up, you're going to be looking for those people and they're expecting you. So it's not like you're just walking up and saying, hey, you you're you say, hey, I. I'm Nick Shelton from the, the chat. I commented on the Christmas tree disposal comment or whatever. And they say, oh, yes. And so now you have some people that are expecting you. So you're not walking into a completely cold room. Another thing is, uh, well, I say show up. You know, the number one thing is show up. So even if you are not going to talk to anyone, you need to at least be there. You need to be yeah. in the room. So if you need someplace to start, you don't have to say, because I know some people say, I will go and I will talk to two people. That's my goal. I say the goal first, show up. You got to actually be there. So, and a lot of times people say, well, no one else would go. So I didn't go, but I found the best thing to do is go by yourself. The reason why, if you if you must go with someone else, then sure. But if you can't, go by yourself because it forces you to talk to somebody sure. usually. Because, uh, and I go to a, tons of events by myself because I say, like, if I know a bunch of people, then I might go bring someone with me. But uh, if I don't know anyone, I say I should go by myself because I it will force me to I I'll be sitting at a table with a bunch of people I don't know I'll be I don't know anyone so it's it forces me to engage with pretty much everyone but and, that's such a great idea though I never thought of that is when you if you're going to go to an event you get involved in chance and whatnot you know you're you're kind of breaking the ice before you even get to the ice so yes I'll, I like that I'll, I like that a lot oh thank you and on that same kind of uh, line of thinking if there's like a conference or something like that, usually if it's an out of town conference or it might be in your town and other people from out of town are coming in, usually there's a group of people that will say, does anyone want to split a ride from the airport? And then I used to not do it. But then one day I said, I should do this because then we're both on equal footing here. We're both just strangers in the airport getting a ride. So now I meet this person and we get to know each other on the way to the hotel mm -hmm. uh, from on that airport ride. So at least I know this one person. So the next day when the event starts, I'm looking for that one person. I know them. Or they'll say, there'll be people that'll say, we're going to go out for drinks and appetizers at this bar, at the hotel bar or whatever, you know, at 8 p.m. And that's the night before the event. And I say, well, I'm terrified. I don't want to do that, but I'm going to go. And then so you go, because I used to always notice when I go to events, I'd say, there's these five people that know each other. And they're always talking about, oh, last night we had such a good time. And I'm like, what did I miss? How do they already know each other? We all just got here. But I said, okay, I need to make sure that whenever there's something happening, the night before the event, there's going to be people meeting somewhere. I need to be there. And if there's nothing, then I can be the person. So I can control it. If I say, I'm going to be at, you know, the hotel bar. And if anybody wants to come down and have a, an appetizer and talk, then someone will show up and maybe it'll be me that they're, they're looking for. I'm running the show. Oh, Nick organized this. And then, uh -huh. <laughs> and then I'm meeting those people. So then when the big event happens, it's way easier to meet you know, the four or five people at the bar the night before, then just walk into the cold room and try to figure it out at that time. You know, one of the best, um, one of the biggest game changers for me in, in terms of, you know, meeting successful people and whatnot, Nick, 
was many years ago, and this was back when I couldn't even afford to do it, but I did it anyway. I traveled a lot. Yes. I always, always paid the extra money to, to sit in first class. Yes. Always. Even, yes. even if I had to borrow the money, I did it. Because chances are you're sitting next to someone who has the money to, to, to buy that ticket. And the, the, the wisdom that I have gained over 30 years of, of air travel just sitting next to people in first class. I've sat next to entertainers, corporate CEOs, entrepreneurs, and whatnot. The, right. it, it was it was better than going to Harvard for four years. It really was. Yes. And it, it, but you know sometimes, and, and, and it's kind of like you know the point is is that if you if you can't find people, then sometimes you may have to pay some money. Right or pay extra to go see these people, but you can, you can get in to see almost anyone that you want. And, and you know what, if you have to buy your way in, then so what, who cares? Right. It, it, you know, it, chances are it's money well spent. Yes, absolutely. It's... Yeah. So that's, that's what I did. And, uh, and a lot of the things that I enjoy now came from, you know, 15, 20 years ago, sitting in first class next to a total stranger and now that I do business with these people. So uh, it, it, it's well worth it, but it's being in that environment. It, right. It's funny that I've always noticed when you're sitting in first class, most of the people are reading a book and you look <laughs> yes. back and coach and they're playing a, a game on their phone. Right. And there's, there's yeah. a reason for that. Yes, absolutely. And on that same note, because I do that same thing, but I also tell people in the book, I say, uh, stay at the most expensive hotel you can afford. And it's for that same reason, because whether you are, and you don't have to get the presidential suite, you could just get the most basic room. But then when you're at the at the bar or when you're in the gym or by the pool, all of those people are people that are usually doing things, mover, movers and shakers. And so you're, mm -hmm. uh, you have a, a great chance to meet someone who's, uh, one of those, maybe the five people that you should be spending more time around. So just by being in that environment. And wouldn't you agree? A lot of people have the preconceived notion that these successful people don't want to talk to anyone and whatnot. But w I find the the lion's share of these people are very approachable. Very approachable. Yeah, they're just human beings that actually want to talk to people also. So yeah, that's they're curious as well to to beat people yeah. and learn about things. Because I, I believe that one of the reasons why they're so approachable and why they're willing to help you and whatnot is because years ago, they were where you are now. Right. So they, they understand, they get it. Yes. It's uh, one funny thing. This, I was having a conversation about this last week with someone that uh, organizes. I go to a lot of fundraisers and there's a lot of, uh, professional athletes that uh, a lot of the fundraisers that I go to. And one of the funny things is since I don't really follow sports, so I don't know any of the athletes. And so I've connected with them. And a lot of them are my friends because I don't make a big deal. I'm not like, Oh, you're so-and-so because I have no idea who they are. So I'm just, yeah. I treat them like a regular person and talk to them, whatever. <laughs> and then some of my friends will go, Oh, do you know so-and-so? And I'm like, what is that? Is is he somebody that, <laughs> that yeah, he's somebody? <laughs> yeah. And so yeah, I have no idea because I'm everybody's pretty much the same. I don't have that uh like because I don't know that they're supposed to be a big deal and I'm supposed to be acting different. So I just treat them regular and they they seem to be drawn to it. They like it when someone just doesn't fawn all over them and they just treat them like a regular person. Yeah, I I know some uh, I know a few fairly noted sports figures, and I can tell you, the people they hang out with have no interest in sports whatsoever because right. they for them it's like work. They don't want to talk shop, right? You know, you know, twenty four seven. They want to talk about kayaking through the Everglades, or they want to talk about you know all this other all this other stuff. Um, you know, the, that's like like 
you know, that, that's like meeting a doctor and, you know, at a, at a party and start talking to the doctor about, you know, health stuff that trust me, <laughs> I married the one, they don't want to deal with it because that's, that's right. all they do. Yes. Right. They want to talk about the fun stuff. Yeah. So it's, it's refreshing for them. So, so, so they are very approachable to do. So um, how do people get in touch with you? Uh, how do they find your book? And and when's your when's your new book coming out? All right, so people can get in touch with me. Uh, usually, LinkedIn is a pretty good place. So Nick Shelton on LinkedIn, or uh, they can go to my website, connectedintrovert.com. And the book is on Amazon, uh, an Amazon bestseller, an introvert's guide to world domination. And the audio version will be out in about a month because I've been really slacking on that. So I've had the, the print version out forever, but the audio version is coming out. So people that don't like to actually hold books and turn pages, they can listen to that. You're narrating and, that yourself? I'm not. No? <laughs> I still didn't get around to doing it myself, but I found somebody who really wanted to narrate it and they had a good voice. So I said, okay, yes, you could do it. And yeah, I, 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 I want to narrate. I want to have my book narr narrated. I'm just, I just want to wait till Morgan Freeman's available. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that'd be awesome. <laughs> yes. And uh, yes, and the next book will be out probably in about uh, three months, I would say. And that'll be uh, Peace in the Panic Zone. Is Peace the, in uh, the Panic Zone. Yeah. Yeah. So we, the world needs a lot more of that, don't they? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, you're going to get a big laugh out of this. And um, one of the best icebreakers I've ever used at, at a meeting or, or whatever. And you have to kind of be pretty good at, at reading kind of at people and kind of how their demeanor is going to be. And I've got a pretty good gift for that. Yes. But I have walked up, I'm particularly to guys, I've, I've walked up to them and looked down and I'm like, hey, man, I, I really dig those shoes. How, how long does the doctor say you have to wear them? <laughs> <laughs> oh i like that i'm gonna use that that's good and you know you can practice this stuff um you know anywhere you could practice it at home depot practice it at at you know a lot of people and and i tell i tell my people if you really want to practice go to home depot okay go to the guy with the orange vest who everyone is yelling at him, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I mean, that, that's what he thinks his name is, right. is excuse me. And, you know, I, I will go to Home Depot and I'll find somebody who, you know, I'll find someone who looks really frustrated and whatnot. And uh, I'll say, hey, looks like you're having a rough day. Oh, uh, yeah, it, it's not that. It's not that bad. I'm just, you know, busy day, la, 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 la. And I'll say, hey, um, would it be all right for me to ask you where I can find, you know, these fittings or these light bulbs or whatever, and their whole demeanor changes. And yes. not only will they tell me nine times out of 10, they'll walk me right over there and show me, but it's just, it's just recognizing to them or them seeing that you're seeing them as someone who might be having a bad day or, and whatnot. And just, just, the fact that you recognize that to them yes. is, is deeply appreciated. And you get a lot more of what you want uh, uh, out of people by doing that. But you, you right. I practice it everywhere, at, at Home Depot, at Starbucks, anywhere. Yes. Um, yes. People want to be seen. They want to feel want to like be seen. seen. And yeah, same. Th you and I are a lot alike in the, uh, I would do that at, say, Chipotle during the lunch rush. You know, people are just like, give me this. I want this. I want this. And then when I get to the front line, I just say, how are you doing today? How's your day going? You know, so I don't just yell my order at them. I actually ask them about their day. I sit there and I listen to them. And then we'll have a few more beats while the uh, person behind me is frustrated. Like, why isn't he giving the order? Why is he holding up the line? But then once that person is feels seen, then we go through the process. And a couple of times the manager came out and he said, I saw what you did. Thank you very much. This one's on the house and I'm not doing it to try to get a free burrito, but they, you know, it, these little things can make a difference and they'll remember me. They'll say, oh, that's that guy that actually says please and thank you and actually talks to us, engages with us like we're 
actual people and not food robots. And you'll get an extra scoop of chicken on your burrito. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, that always helps too. Yeah, he's like, hey, he's he's a nice guy. Let's put it on him. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nick, I really do appreciate you being on the day. You have have definitely taught me some things, uh, some strategies, some, uh, some things that I I could be using. I got to get your book and read it, and uh, can't you got to let me know when it, when the narrated version comes out so I can listen yes. to it when I'm when it'll I'm, be soon when I'm I'll driving. Let you know. And thank I, you for I, having me as well. No, thank you for being on. The pleasure was all mine. Pleasure was all mine. It, 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 it's, I have a lot of people on the podcast and uh, I, I would definitely say you are different than most of them in, in a very good way, in, right. in a very good way. So I, I really thank do. You. I really do appreciate you being on and, 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 and I'm really happy uh, and grateful for what it is that you're doing, because I think that there's a lot of introverts out there. Uh, present company included that the world's not really speaking to and um and 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 you're providing some guidance and whatnot on how to use that as 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 a method of success and i really appreciate seeing someone out there do that so thank you well thank you all right well folks give nick give nick a follow um on, on linkedin instagram uh, all the social media, we'll put, we'll put all of Nick's links out. And, uh, once again, Nick brother, I really appreciate you being on. All right. Anytime.